luckiest of everybody on the internet, Dagana, because I have the opportunity to get a keynote speaker to be part of one of my panels. So when I got that, uh, that opportunity, I said, yes. I want Ed Cook, so I invited Ed Cook to be part of a panel talking about digital literacy. So please join us, Ed Cook, Mark Smith, Linda Manila, Lisa Söderlund. We are going to address the issue about if digital literacy actually is something that schools ought to be Educating, teach, uh, educating students in. We have this debate in Sweden about digital literacy. I don't know, I think you have read the article on Dian Debat that said digital literacy isn't actually a, a subject that teachers ought to be engaged in because there is no such thing as digital literacy and if there is, it's a, some knowledge for an expert. And as I see it, Ed, you may be the expert in this area. What do you say? Do you think <laughs> schools ought to be engaged in doing digital literacy for small children? Children in the age of uh, 7 to 15? Or should we start later when they come to the university and actually make choices what to do? What do you say? Um, uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I have two slightly uh, divergent opinions on this one. Um, I think that um, it's extraordinarily important that um, come, um, come one's late teens and adulthood uh, that people have agency in their world. And so obviously we live in a, um, a digital world, and so um, without the ability to act within it, you're kind of um, you're cast adrift. You're not you're not able to be um, to express your um, creativity and participate in the world. And so in, in this sense, I'm kind of very strong on sort of digital literacy, etc. Um, but just to, you know, when I consider my um, my friends who have gone on to do kind of interesting, proactive things in um, technology more generally, um, and and uh, digital um, affairs also. Um, I see a kind of a curious, um, a curious thing, which is that I mean, just for instance, um, the person who um, you know was in the room next to me at university was a, um, a classicist. So he studied um, Latin and Greek, and then he became um, interested in sort of fluid dynamics. And now he has more than more than a hundred patents uh, and a kind of company in the kind of the biotech space. And it's kind of an interesting example of of someone who sort of didn't have access to the underlying kind of concepts and the rest of it, but nonetheless had um, a sense of um, gumption, you could say, or the rest of it, which, which didn't actually come from direct exposure to the thing, but instead in being given lots of responsibility and um, a sense of, I mean, the nasty way of saying it is entitlement. The positive way is saying sort of a sense of, of action. And so uh, just to kind of tie it back together, I think that digital literacy is great, but I think it has to also be tied to a sense and expectation that that people can kind of influence their world, and that digital literacy by itself uh, is, is not enough. It isn't enough. What do you say, Lisa? Is it enough? Should it be a, a, actually a, a subject by itself, or should it have this immense, impressive... We have a whole day around digital knowledge, yeah. and it isn't just this day. It's tomorrow in, in the school in, in Sweden. We talk about it all the time. Is it actually that important? For me, uh, digital literacy and programming, as I was talking about, is uh, about learning another language or another tool to express yourself. Like, express yourself in if you're interested in art or design or, or, or fashion or uh, reading and writing books, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a new form of tool and language that I think it's important to learn about. What do you say, Linda? No? Yes? Yes? Good. <laughs> uh, well, I think, uh, I mean, I think it's different as well if we talk about digital literacy or whether we talk about digital competence, because in my view, literacy is more about actually the using aspects. Are we able to use the tools that we have around us, the technology that we're surrounded with? Uh, so that's one aspect of it. And of course, since we're surrounded by the tools, we need to learn how to use them, because otherwise they will just, uh, well, if we don't know how to use them, we can't utilize the technology that could actually help us in whatever we want 
whatever we want to, to accomplish and do. But then if we take the digital competence aspect, which then again has more to do with understanding, uh, or not, o not only the using aspects, but also the understanding, because in, if we think from a, from a teacher perspective, we've been talking about this TPAC for quite a while. It's uh, about having technological competence, about having pedagogical competence, and about having content knowledge and competence. And of course, uh, but first and foremost, we've been talking a lot about, okay, so we have to have this content that we want to, to give the kids, but then, and then had, when we got the tools, we also had to learn how to use technology to actually teach that content, or in using that, those tools in a pedagogical way. Uh, but now we also, when we talk then about digital competence, we also need to see the digital as part of the content, not only as part of the things that you, that you use technology or the pedagogical aspects. So to actually also, also learn about the, but the digital. But in this article, or in this context, or in this d debate, they say that's an expert knowledge. It's a, a knowledge for experts. Well, well, everything has been a, well, everything has been an expert knowledge sometimes, at some point, right? Because writing and reading was an expert knowledge. But that was something that we learned that, hey, in, act, in, in order to to cope in our society, we actually need to know it. And as society changes, that kind of knowledge also changes. And in a digital world, I think that actually knowing enough about the digital world is part of that knowledge that we need in order to actually be responsible citizens. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, I tend to agree, but I take a, I guess this is, oh, there we I take a slightly broader view of this, especially given my background of really wanting to understand what the technology that my students invent do to them and what it does to society. So literacy is separate from the actual topic. You can understand or be familiar with a topic. Like, for example, my students know all about digital tools. Are they literate? No, they're not. Most of them are completely digitally illiterate. And how, I, how do I define that? I define it, the ability to use a tool in a way that allows you to constructively contribute to society and constructively contribute to how the society is developed. So for example, do my students really understand what it means when they use those tools? A lot of it has to do with what the second keynote speaker was talking about this morning. When they're out there on Facebook, do they really know what they're doing? When they click on something and they put their friend's pictures drunk up on the internet, do they really know what they're doing? When they put all of those personal details out there, or, they, or when they allow Google Maps to track everything they do as they go through a city, do they really know what they're doing? Now, if they do, and they're doing it with the full knowledge and best interests of themselves and the people around them, then they're literate. And if you know what those tools are being used for and you know the consequences of using them and how it affects the community you live in, then you're literate. But how many people know that? Yeah, but if that is to be literate, uh, is the teacher even literate? Do they all have they the capacity to actually teach these thing, things to the students? Because that's the next issue in this uh, area. How do we get the teachers to get that knowledge then? Yeah, ah. you open the door. Okay, <laughs> well, the way you get the teachers to actually be able to recognize this is again, that connection to the community. What is the effect on the digital tools starting locally? Start locally and look at how are your students using digital tools? What are they doing with each other? How are they interacting and sharing knowledge? And how does that affect the community? Is it positive or negative? In other words, as an educator, you have the, you have the obligation to get that knowledge one way or another, teach yourself or share it with others. But you have to really investigate this. So in other words, if you are an educator and you realize you don't know this, that's always our first job as an educator. What is it I don't know? And then after that, seek to get the knowledge. And one of the best ways is from your own students. So that's where I get this. That's how I learned about what happens with Facebook. I could keep you here all day with incredibly <laughs> funny stories about what my students but have Linda done. Wants but to I speak. won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be very interesting to, to learn about. Uh, but I also think that we shouldn't. All, this isn't only something that educators now are obliged to do. This is something that we all have the actual obligation to learn about. I agree. Yeah. Not only looking at your students, looking at your kids, but also looking at your own behavior because mm. we as adults are not much better. For, we might even be worse than Maybe what the worse. kids are doing. Yeah, exactly. So look, look at what you're doing yourself as well, and, uh, as well and, and learn with the kids. Learn together with the students and try to investigate together at what are actually the things that we need to learn. Because you usually talk about digital competence as this 
uh, moving target. So we, we might think of it as something today, but ne next year we might have something new to investigate again. So it can't be something that we learn today and then we are sit by fat and happy for five years, but we actually have to relearn all the time. And then knowledge about memory becomes really important. And my, my recollection of these tools is that I don't have to remember anything. I just have to put it in that computer and it will remember everything for me. So memory, I don't need to learn memory skills, do I? Uh, no, th <laughs> you don't. Um, that wouldn't be super <laughs> I, th I think there is one, there is one sort of um, abstract feature of, of memory which is really relevant here, which is that you, uh, which is actually perhaps more of a thing about perception, which is that you tend to perceive that something is there only after you um, have, so can have some influence on it. So, um, you know, it's, it's amazing to see how people's, the f kind of phenomenology of their perception of a city changes when they can influence it. So if you have, a, if you have a, some kind of influence over where the, um, where the benches go, or if you've ever actually planted a tree and have some concept of what it actually takes to plant a tree, you su suddenly will tend to perceive after that um, that there are trees around. You know, well, well, once you've actually gone through the process of doing something, you suddenly notice as a, as a thing which is not just a gift from reality, it's actually a feature of, uh, of the world which you can potentially change and have influence on. And so kind of vibing off what you guys were saying, I think, um, I think um, agency is, is, is at the heart of this. And, and I think a kind of expanded notion of literacy, which, um, which really emphasizes being able to sort of notice that you're within the tool is one thing, but being able to proactively hack it is, is, is a totally different thing, which then, then gives you a thing. And, and I do have a kind of an interesting, I was chatting with a friend the other night about how, you know, this kind of, this view that maybe the internet was at its best in about like 1997, uh, and everything else has been sort of a kind of regressible thing. And, you know, if you think about the magic of, of, of the internet at that time, it was the, the magic of, um, of connecting with people um, who, um, and being actually really quite nice to them um, <laughs> in sort of anonymous chat rooms and so on and so forth, where what, there was this sense that, that, we, we, that there was a possibility of new forms of social connection and new forms of society. And the, the last time we had that in any kind of form at a mass scale was in the brief, spectacular and somewhat ugly rise of uh, chat roulette, where there were, were these wonderful evenings where you'd spend sort of, um, you know, um, you know, time singing songs to Russian sailors uh, on the other side of Russia and so on. There was a sense of connection. And one of the things about contemporary digital tools is they're so well made, so pervasive and so powerful. That it's actually difficult to think of like how you can improve on the Facebook groups experience or, or whatever it is. And so um, I don't know what to do about this, but I think there is a good argument for lots of sort of short-sighted regulation, which makes it really difficult to build a big internet company, allowing a thousand flowers to bloom in communities or perhaps some other mechanisms to um, um, create digital agency. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I can just connect that to one of our uh, sh children that was uh, attending a code club at the Spotify office uh, in Gothenburg. Uh, they were asking us beforehand, how do I get into the app? Because they couldn't really see for themselves that it was a, an office with human beings uh, sitting there uh, coding <laughs> Spotify. Uh, so, so you think of the, all this technology like just technology and it's like from given from God or magic as you said the internet was magic but we need the kids to understand that it's actual persons it's human beings uh, behind all technology and you can be one of them also yeah and you you said earlier the question was is it enough or should we learn it at 7 to 15 or could we just leave, leave it to later uh, so it's been further on this so if we leave it to further then we definitely lose all the girls, or then the risk of losing the girls will be become even bigger, because as we heard in the keynote, if you can't see it, you can't be it. So the younger you are, when you can actually see girls talking about these things, seeing people of your same skin colors, people that you identify with, uh, talking about these things, actually doing things concretely about them, the bigger the chance of you actually finding yourself in that spot later on. So I think waiting until university is way too late. You shouldn't wait till. And also, I think, um, also leveraging from the second keynote speaker, I really think that bringing into the classroom serious content dealing with the code of ethics, what does it mean to be ethically, what is the ethical use of digitalization? And I think having that is also a vehicle, an, another form of agency to be able to do this. So that students understand, and as part of their critical thinking and computational thought, be able to say, what is the consequences of doing this? And I think that would be another way. 
How have you thought around that ethical uh, implication around doing a language app for memory <laughs> and all? How do you actually make it ethical? Well, God forbid that people would speak to each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, we yeah. have, but we have to we have to be nice as well, don't we? Yeah, or can I say <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Bad that's true. stuff. Um, yeah, I think that um, certain certain digital platforms kind of have. Um, more power and responsibility than a than a language learning app in in this respect. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 uh, what do I think about it? <laughs> uh -huh. But it's actually it's actually I, I haven't got a, like a micro anecdote. We spent quite a lot of time thinking about what our introductory language stuff uh, you know w because includes. We, we, um, just in terms my, of the when I talk to my yeah. husband, he knows every Finnish bad word uh -huh. that ever were. And he knows uh -huh. everybody in, in, in he knows mm -hmm. the Czechist word for for uh, yeah, all yeah. the well, ugly stuff. Yeah, and, we, we, in terms maybe of that maybe we should start maybe you start there as well. Well yeah in terms of choosing <laughs> the content we do um, we do try and um, uh, bias the content towards things which will create conversations which aren't necessarily positive things. So for instance um, um, we have a problem. Uh, is uh, is an early phrase which uh, yeah, generates this type of stuff. I mean, I, I, one, one thing which I think is sort of um, which is you know I think which which you, your anecdote relates to is that um, the, the the digital products are kind of inscrutable. Um, you know, it, when, when you kind of when you go to your local market, you see how that architectural space is built. You see all the participants, and you can directly interact with them. And I wonder if there is some principle of digital product design where you could kind of double click on any feature and then get a kind of a live stream to the three people in the Spotify Gothenburg office uh, and get more of a sense of actual human causality behind these things. Uh, how, how would you think about uh, that? <laughs> You want to reply, Lisa? I, I think that would be lovely. We're talking about like digital volunteers. Maybe we could do something like that, but maybe because hard to work with. Because we have this telly on the, the area in, in front of the uh, keynote area where you can look at the, our co-working space, go to TA. You can look at, at, into it live <laughs> as it's happening. So then maybe that's the next step. One, uh, one just random thought is that um, it's, it's always good when your tools break because then you notice what they are and the rest of it. And it would be quite fun if we could um, create some kind of um, um, any tool with more than 100,000 users would automatically be broken for one day a week um, or something like that to, um, to give kind of the local internet the chance to, to bloom and local digital tools the chance to... Um, and you think that would actually make people more... Uh, goodwill towards the need of digital competence and the knowledge about digital tools. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Because then we can interact with it and make it better. That's it. I think that's exactly it. And, and just to sort, of, to, to sort of reiterate the kind of serious point here, I, I just don't think that, that you have a sense, or you don't really perceive or have a real sense of agency over something you can't affect. And um, this is and the kind that's of... I think we should end there, because that is actually, <laughs> yeah, that's really true, because that's the need for digital knowledge not, and competence. You can't have any agency over something you don't know. So that's why we have to have education in it, don't we? Yes. Yeah. And I hope everybody will learn language through your app. And memory, memory, memory tubes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, in Swedish, nu är det lunch. Det är en lunch keynote som heter Max Tegmark eh, och det, vi träffas här igen klockan två då jag ska presentera vår statistik om barnens vardagsanvändning av internet. Thank you. Thank you very much.